Hello, Mr. Walker here, dropping the knowledge on you for the causes of the Great Depression. All right, today we're going to take a look at how America fell into the worst economic times they have ever seen. All right, so our first cause is the war demand ends. After World War I, a lot of key industries ended, such as railroads, because we're not hauling things back and forth. And that would go with the coal that is tied to the railroads as well. Um, we're not hauling as much stuff. We're not creating as much stuff. Um, textiles, that's the clothing industry, all right? The clothing industry is, you know, making uniforms and uh, uh, making outfits and all the clothing that goes with the war. Um, they no longer have to make it. The steel is barely making a profit. Steel industry, not needed for the war effort anymore. And so um, a lot of workers are going to be laid off. There's a lot of jobs here. And the problem is like the soldiers are coming back from World War I and there's going to be no jobs. And now this is the early 20s. And so this is going to kind of linger in through the 20s. And when the 30s hit, it's going to be a lot worse. These industries are already hurting. OK, farmers were another one that were hurt by the war demand. OK, when the war broke out, the government asked uh, farmers to grow a lot of crops for the and the government would pay them and then they give it to the military. After the war, the U.S. doesn't need that much grain. They don't need that much crops. OK, and so the farmers have what is called a surplus. A surplus is when you have more than you need. OK, um, and so what happens is the price falls. Like if you have, you know, if you're trying to sell a TV for $100, but no one buys it, so you drop the price. Well, if you have a lot of corn, you know, you used to sell it at, at this, but you might want to sell it at this so you can get a lot more out as well as try to sell more, okay? The farmers needed the produce, uh, needed the boost production in order to sell more, okay? Um, so they thought since the price had fallen, they'll grow even more and then they'll have to sell just twice as much to get back to where they were. Well, the problem is when you already have a surplus and then you add to the surplus, you drop the price even further. Um, so farmers were not even really making a profit. The incomes were declining. Um, they start defaulting on their loans. They start losing their farms. OK, and so this is, you know, happening in the 20s. The farmers were already in the Great Depression in the 20s. Um, then Congress came up with an idea that the government will buy the surplus crops from the farmers because that's what they were originally doing. And the government didn't really plan, uh, how to make sure that the farmers were going to be okay once the war demand dropped. Um, and also this would say, so they introduced the bill that was going to become a law that said the government would buy the surplus crops from them at a uh, guaranteed price and that also in the market that the price of grain couldn't fall any further right both houses of congress passed this they give it to the president president coolidge and he vetoes it so there is no help uh for the farmers okay uh, they're gonna fall into really really hard times and a lot of them are gonna lose their farm another cause is the smoot hawley tariff act all right 1930 president hoover signed the smoot hawley tariff act what that is is it uh, puts high taxes on imported goods and import is when we buy a good from another country okay we put high taxes on them so say for a car it's like ten thousand dollars right well we'll we'll put a tax on it which would make that car twelve thousand dollars okay the idea is um, to discourage you from buying foreign products so that you'll buy American products therefore supporting American workers because if you buy foreign uh, products that you know then the American person isn't, uh, you're not buying their product. So therefore, if their product isn't selling, then I don't need the worker. So if we tax foreign goods, then we're protecting American jobs. However, when we did this and we set high tariffs on or taxes on them, uh, on their imported good, these tariffs, the other countries retaliated by raising tariffs on our goods. So we quit buying foreign goods and they quit buying American goods and foreign trade went down 66%. So, you know, that's, um, that's a lot. Okay. So for every dollar that came in, we're no longer getting 66 cents of that. We're now only getting $34 for every dollar that we used to get a lot of jobs here, a lot of loss and hurt. Okay. So, um, foreign markets lose money. American markets lose money. Companies have a hard time paying back loans. And when you can't pay your loans back, your business fails and you have to uh, let go of all your workers and 
now people are without a job okay another and this is the major one this is the major cause of the great depression okay people were living on credit in the 1920s it was called the roaring 20s and it was assumed that the economy was going really well um the thing was though in the 20s they created the assembly line and factories which allowed them to produce products such as the car uh very quickly and then what very when you make a product very quickly you end up having a surplus and the surplus is good to the consumer because the surplus drops the price when the price dropped everybody was able to afford everything um but when you couldn't afford everything and all the new gadgets and uh machines that came out like the washing machine you know um you would buy it on credit, much like a credit card today, or, but pretty much what it is, it's a loan, all right? You buy a little bit now and you pay the rest later in increments per month, okay? Uh, Christmas, people like to call, uh, you know, layaway is another form of credit. Um, you buy now and you pay a little as you go. The problem is businesses were giving easy credit, like, oh, you need a loan, here you go. You need a loan, here you go. They weren't really asking, like, how many loans do you have? So consumers had a lot of loans, a lot of debt. And so pretty much they went from buying new things all the time to only buying, paying their bills. They had no extra money for anything else, right? When you quit buying those products from those places, okay, um, they can't afford to pay their employees. And, you know, if they're not selling product and they can't afford to pay their employees, they let their employees go. Those employees now don't have money to spend on other items. Okay, there's kind of this waterfall here. When a group when a when the workers at this business lose their job, okay, the money they used to spend at other businesses, they no longer have. So those other businesses are going to lose money. And when they lose enough money, they have to fire their employees. And the money that their employees spent at other businesses are no longer being spent. So you see this trip, this ripple effect of um people losing job people quit spending money okay and so the consumers they had all these loans they stopped spending the money which caused other people to lose their jobs okay and this included boom industries such as the automobile construction consumer goods okay um people were buying 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 they racked up all this debt they had all these loans they couldn't pay it all back um and so and, and people stopped buying product altogether or you know limit how much they're spending so um, that really hurts businesses and that creates that ripple effect of unemployment okay All right and so this is kind of like the 1920s you can see this uh, sign here buy today pay later select what you need like hey grab this washing machine arrange the convenient terms that's how much you're gonna put down now and how much you're gonna pay per month for how long and then enjoy immediate delivery so they would just bring it right to you you know um, cars radios new products all of that uh, was something people were buying in the 20s because the price of things came down and people were buying on credit they thought it was really good but in reality um, most people in the 20s couldn't afford how much they were buying okay and really the amount of money they were making or they thought it was roaring and they had a lot of money wasn't simply true either okay uneven distribution of income in the 1920s the rich get richer the poor get poor and what this means is we start to see inflation of prices okay um, when the inflation of price goes up you know if you bought something for a dollar now it's a dollar fifty well that's costing you more money each time you buy that okay if your wage doesn't go up to match inflation that means you're making the same amount of money but paying more for things you already bought so you are losing money okay and as demand for things go up so does the price okay remember that from the stock market um, so demand for things drives the price up more and more and so you're spending more and more on the same thing you used to get at a lower price well what happens is the capitalist the rich person the business owner who's making the product they get more money while the worker makes the same but pays more so they technically have less money than they used to have while the person who makes the product has more than what they had because they're charging more okay as i said in the last like 70 percent of families are earning less than the minimum for a decent standard of living in the 20s and <clears throat> they simply cannot afford all of these products okay and this is kind of a chart that shows the 1920s starting here you actually see the recession that hit in 1921 1922 the economy comes back, but it doesn't like raise very high where you could be spending more money. Okay. 
this is this is pretty much a plateau this is you know this is not a big spike where people would afford to have more money all right so the top one percent owns 99 percent of the money whereas the bottom 99 or the 99 percent of the population only has one percent of the money all right overproduction in industry was another cause okay the factories were producing products however the wages for the workers were not rising enough to buy them okay as I said, so, you know, people can't afford the products. The products don't sell. If the product doesn't sell, the, the employee gets laid off, okay? Too few workers could actually afford to buy the factory output and all the things that they were selling. Um, and that goes back to if you can't sell the product, I can't keep the employees, all right? The surplus products couldn't be sold overseas either due to the high tariffs um, that Europe put on us. So... Um, you know, trying being like, oh, well, if no one's buying it at home, maybe people are buying it out in the world in other countries. No, because of the tariffs. So nobody's buying anything and no employees are needed. And so that's going to be this ripple effect. Soon all the people in the car industry are going to be employed and all the money they spent and the and then they spent money at businesses. Well, those businesses aren't getting that money, so they have to lay off their employees and their employees aren't spending money at the other businesses. So they have to lay off their employees. And it's going to, this trickles down and it turns into a horrible, horrible, high, high unemployment rate, right? At the worst in the depression, it was 25%. One in four people uh, could not find a job, right? That is significantly high. Then the last cause is the stock market crash. Okay, so yesterday we talked about the stock market. In the 1920s, um, we kind of covered this, the Dow Jones and, you know, that's tracking the stock market. How well is it doing? Many people engaged in what was called speculation, like, hey, I hear this bit, this company is doing really good and in, you know, four months they're going to be triple their price. So people would throw a whole bunch of money at this. There's no guarantee in the stock market, okay? You can watch the trends and you can buy and sell based on trends, um, but there's no guarantee. And so when people engage in speculation, you're going to throw a bunch of money at it and it could fail. And then sometimes it did. So this is people paying, playing fast and loose with the stock market is, um, you know, it creates this idea that there's more this confidence that there's more money in there than there is. OK. Also, people were buying on margin where if I'm investing ten thousand dollars, I only have five thousand. I go to the bank and. Uh, borrow the other 5,000. That's a loan I have to pay back. If I lose that money, I owe the bank, but the bank is also out of that money as well. And also the banks are buying stock too. They're actually taking the money that people are putting into the bank. Your money is actually not in the bank. They loan it out to people and, and the idea that they'll get the money back in interest. Um, and so when they lost money on the stock market, uh, they lost people's money. And then the people who loaned money uh, from the bank. They also took that money from other people and loaned it too. Um, so on September 29th, 1929, what ends up happening is the stock prices were at an all-time high. And so people start selling to make the most profit. Well, when a lot, when people start selling, people started to panic because when you sell a lot, the price comes down. And so they were selling, 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 and the price kept falling and falling and falling and falling and finally <laughs> bottom plummeted out and all the businesses were lost and every a lot of people lost all of their money if they weren't able to sell early in the day. So you're talking to like a lot of money and if you borrowed from the bank, now you're in debt to the bank. And if the bank was doing it, now they lost everybody's money who put money into the bank. Um, and so people were fearing that, uh, people were fearing that the banks wouldn't have the money. And so what they did is what was called bank runs, okay? They rushed to the banks. Look at all these people, right? The bank doesn't, the bank loans out your money, okay? It's not technically really there. They loan it out to people to buy cars and houses, and but the interest that people pay back will be the money that gets put back into your bank account. Well, when people lost all the money on the stock market, people rushed to the bank. All these people up here, they're gonna get their money, but the bank's gonna run out and all these people are going to be without their money. Same thing with this. People in the front get their money. People back here are not going to get that money. Okay. And so banks actually start closing. And if they lost all your money and if you didn't get all your money out, too bad. So sad. They didn't have any sort of backup for that. Okay. Um, and then we'll be taking a look at charts here later. Okay. Uh, if you have any questions, just reach out. Join us next time. Go make some history.
Walker out.